Top 10 reasons no one likes Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Starting off with number 10, media. Do we really need to talk about the many, many times the couple has brought up the royal family after stepping down? Meg and Harry managed to get a whole lot of attention after their announcement to move out of the palace, which eventually led to them stepping down. Now, obviously, the British media did not take this news lightly, with many outlets creating stories not supporting the royals or their decisions. It seemed like once the two were out of the palace, they had a hard time dealing with the media and really kept on making headlines. From getting caught spending too much money to using private jets, Harry and Meghan have been under a lot of scrutiny by the public. This has become so bad that it's created a divide among people who are in support of them and those who are not. Something that should be avoided. People are no longer neutral towards the couple, making it impossible to have an open discussion about this topic without bias. It's clear Harry and Meghan need to take some time out of the spotlight in order for people to forget about their past issues with the media and hopefully create a better image of themselves. In order to do this, they just need to find a way to communicate with the British media without making headlines or creating controversy. Number nine, Harry and Meg docuseries. Since the backlash from their infamous interview didn't seem to do anything, it was followed by this tell-all docuseries that dove into the personal lives of the couple and their experiences at the royal palace, which they felt was mandatory to share with the rest of the world. And just to be clear, this caused just as much, if not more, backlash with more people questioning why the couple keeps sharing all these personal stories after claiming they want to keep their personal lives away from the media attention. Many people have started to see Harry and Meg as attention-seeking with their antics on social media and the constant press coverage they are subject to. Whether this is true or not is up for debate, but it's clear that neither of them has done themselves any favor in terms of public opinion. People are growing tired of hearing about their drama and there seems to be no end in sight to their story. The docuseries was an interesting watch, but it didn't do anything to make the general public feel any better about Harry and Meg. In fact, after watching the show, people had even more questions. Why they do what they do and why they keep airing out all of their personal drama. The bottom line is that it doesn't seem like anyone really likes Meg and Harry. They're seen as attention seekers and no matter what they do, people just don't seem to be rallying around them with support or understanding. Even when they have good intentions, there still seems to be a negative reaction from the public. Number eight, leaving the family. Once the couple officially left the family, it seemed as if there was only one thing Meghan and Harry were chasing, the bag. Since they don't make money as working members of the Royals, they've made commercial arrangements where it seems like the only thing keeping them relevant is the fascination with them fleeing the Royal family, which I can't lie is a pretty savage move. With the constant drama and the tabloid coverage that follows them everywhere they go, it's no wonder people are sick of hearing about them. Not to mention all the rules for the media when they were in the Royal family. They would not let photographers take pictures of Archie until he was six months old, which is a very long time for such an important event. The media was also not not able to take pictures or videos of Archie's first birthday, which is also a major milestone in his life. It seems that the secrecy surrounding their lives made people feel like they had something to hide. And that added even more fuel to the fire when it comes to public opinion. The constant drama seems like every time you turn around, something else is happening with Meghan Harry. Whether it's drama between their families, or a royal scandal, or just general gossip, people can't seem to get enough of it. And the more they hear about it, the less they like the couple. The constant media attention on them also takes away from the other royals who are making real contributions to the monarchy and to society. The lack of accountability when it comes to their choices also doesn't help. They're often seen as flaunting their wealth without really using it for any meaningful cause, which rubs people the wrong way. Number seven, deals. The couple claimed to have given up a lot to start a whole new life, but did they? So far, most things they've been doing involve the fact that they haven't moved on from their past life. For one, the title of Harry and Meg's foundation caused some royal drama because they were trying to use royal Sussexes while not being working royal members anymore. No one likes Harry and Meghan, at least not in the way they used to. You know, when we all thought that Prince Harry was some sort of knight in shining armor and Meghan Markle was a modern day Cinderella. Fast forward to now and it's clear that the couple has lost a lot of the public support. It seems like every move they make is met with scrutiny and criticism. From their decision to keep private details about their son Archie, to their expensive renovation costs to their new home, they seem to be making decisions that don't sit well with everyone. It's hard to tell if Harry and Meghan will ever regain the public's trust, but one thing is sure, 
They've lost a lot of their fans. From the looks of it, this once beloved couple may have to do some serious work if they ever want to get back into people's good graces. One possible way to start would be for them to take more accountability for their actions and be more transparent about how their decisions could affect the public. Until then, it seems like no one will be loving Harry and Meghan as much as they used to. Only time will tell if the couple can win back people's trust, but for now, it's safe to say that the royal couple has quite a long road ahead of them if they want to rebuild their image and start to receive the same level of positive, of positive public opinion they once had. As long as they continue to make decisions that benefit them and not necessarily the people, it seems unlikely that we'll see a return of their good old days anytime soon. Number six, the family drama. Where do I even begin? After Harry had a discussion with Will about Meg, an argument was created, and according to Spare, Will, future king, pushed Harry onto the floor. Camilla has admitted to not liking Meg, and while the dislike is reciprocated, the queen consort has admitted she's never been a fan of the Duchess of Sussex. In addition to that, there's also the infamous rift between Harry and his brother, William. It all began when Will reportedly told Harry he needed to put his foot down with Meg while they were still dating. A sparked an argument and reportedly caused a rift ever since. The way Meg was received by the royal family may have been another reason why some of them do not like her as much as they should. When she first arrived, Meg wasn't, Meg wasn't accepted with open arms and didn't seem to get along with all the members. Furthermore, there is the infamous story of how she acted when Meghan first met the Queen. She reportedly curtsied a little too low and then spoke to her in an overly familiar manner, which made the Queen uncomfortable. Number 5, Frosty Family. Now that Meghan is no longer an official member of the Royals, she's been dishing about Prince Harry's side of the family and she tells us what life was really like inside the palace. A little frosty. She claimed there was a lack of warmth <clears throat> at royal family gatherings and finds all the standoffish behavior very odd. Kate apparently is the biggest culprit. As an American, Meg can't wrap her head around the fact that no one in the family likes to hug. But I mean, I don't really see that as a big deal, but I guess hate to use their own, right? It's not just Meg who finds the royal family's standard of behavior strange either. Harry has also made a few remarks about his own mother, Princess Diana, and how she was treated by the royals. My mother took a huge part in showing me an amazing life and love. Harry and Meghan both seem to share a common understanding of the royal family's ways, something that the rest of us mere mortals may never understand. <laughs> Number four, privacy. After vocalizing concerns over needing privacy as a royal, many people, many people seem to feel as if it was an unreasonable demand for Meghan. Especially during all the controversies, all while including an inside look on their life as royals, which is to be featured with never before seen pictures of the family. After Meghan tried to reiterate her feeling of needing privacy and how it is a basic human right. Number three, drama. The family drama doesn't stop at Harry's royal side. Meg's half-sister had decided to, she wants a slice of the fame too and was vocalizing how much of a brat Meghan was and how becoming a royal changed her. The media was having a field day pitting the two clans against each other and creating headlines that make them look worse than ever. With every move they try to make, someone is trying to one-up them and it's become more of a game than a real-life situation. Of course, it doesn't help that the tabloids are always barking about the couple's every move and the public are now divided. Is it fair to say that no one really likes Harry and Meghan right now? It looks like the only way this can get better is if they take a step back from all the drama and put their family first. Unfortunately, in the world of modern media, each new development brings more questions about their actions and intentions. Number two, mocking. In the second episode of Harry and Meghan, Meghan brought up her first time meeting the Queen. She described how she and Harry were attending a lunch at the Royal Lodge when he let her know that his grandmother would be joining them a little later on. In the docuseries, she says, I remember we were in the car and driving up, and he said, You know how to curtsy, right? And I just thought it was a joke. Little did Meghan know that Harry's joke was anything but. She later revealed how she had to rush off to the loo and practice curtsying a few times before the queen arrived, making it all the more embarrassing when they finally met. The royal couple may the royal couple had been known to be a bit too cheeky in public, making jokes at the expense of other members. On top of that, they seem to think they're better than everyone else, often looking down on people for not having the same wealth and privilege as them. And finally number 1, the interview. 
Among the many things Harry discussed during this interview, some things that totally stuck out were his comparison of some other royal members' behavior and to that of abusers, and how he dealt with the loss of his mother and his strained relationship with his brother. If you haven't seen it yet, go watch it and let me know your thoughts on this royalty. But that is all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.